Let's just see something real quick. session I did um, is what I'm gonna lead into into sorry uh, for my for my talk today so given it's a topic that not many of you are probably all too you know comfortable with or familiar with I'm gonna try to make this the best that I can given the subject matter so to begin though I've got a few questions for you guys so by a show of hands who's listened to music in this past week simple question all right, so who here who has listened to music, who ha uh, uses a streaming service like Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, any of those? All right, now the big question, who of you in the past year have used that service to listen to jazz? Willingly, at least, not your parents or anything. Okay, exactly, so not all that many. And what I'm trying to show is that jazz is, for our generation at least, a dying art form loaded with a rich historical past that shouldn't be disappearing, especially here in the U.S. since jazz is the only true American art form. There are stories of countless amazing musicians who mastered their craft in such a way that they're able to speak and tell their stories through their instruments. Many household names such as Charlie Parker, Charles Mingus, John Coltrane, and Jaco Pistorius come to mind. And as a musician, all of my hours of practice, all the doodles of chords and, and different modes in my notebooks, and all the ideas that pop into my head, such as, such as those, at a moment's notice of what to play or what effects to make, are all part of the process of gaining that flexibility on my instruments. And while this may sound a little cliche, creating music is most definitely certain, like something almost anybody can do. Doing it well, on the other hand, is something that takes a very high level of dedication, hard work, lots of experimentation, and almost an unhealthy obsession that not many people want to dive into. One of the greatest parts of creating music that is that it traverses boundaries of race, language, class, and creed. If I were to say, fly to the other side of the world, I could walk into any jazz club jam session, start playing with my musical brothers and sisters with whom I've never spoken. That's how powerful jazz is as a form of communication and a way of bonding. This is something that is ingrained in our DNA. The oldest instrument ever discovered, a kind of primitive flute, dates back over 43,000 years ago. And it's one of the many examples of prehistoric music played by tribes. It's considered that music was used by the tribes as a communal activity to bring members of the tribe together. And that's exactly what music is in its purest state. They didn't have any sheet music. These tribes, men and women, played what came to them. And that's basically the modern equivalent of pure jazz. It's something that brings together people regardless of their stories. Most, if not all, of the jazz band members, uh, at school at least, we've been playing since way back in sixth grade when we were first given the opportunity to start. And this is because jazz is a complicated musical art form with many different styles and rhythms that we had to master. And in addition to that, jazz requires a huge amount of improvisation, which was something that none of us had ever been tasked with before. It was all these difficult factors that were so new to me that made jazz an immediate passion. Two of my best friends that you may have seen in the last session perform with me became my friends because in middle school, we played jazz band together. It gave us opportunities for more amounts of creative expression than any other music could. Our group of friends has had tremendous success bringing fun, upbeat, contemporary uh, jazz songs to playing for change as our group, the Masters of Sax. We want to show the student body that jazz is fun. It can be more entertaining than the boring elevator music that many people think jazz often is. For example, the, the We song that we played, along with the Play That Funky Music chart that I arranged and played for Playing for Change last year, in addition to the song that we'll be playing later this year, but I don't want to give that away, shows that jazz can be fun. That was one of the most fun concerts I've ever played at. And it wasn't because the music was especially fun or because I got to perform with my best friends, but it was because I got to express myself in the best way I know possible. And that's through the lens of improvisation. Jazz isn't just a form of music. It's a culture of limitless communication and expression possibilities. 
Jazz is also a way to express yourself through the lines and notes used in solos. A lot of times when I perform live, people will ask me, hey, can you play exactly what you just played again? Like, it was pretty cool. And I say, no. No two recordings of the same song ever really sound the same way in jazz. It's a language that every person speaks differently. Live jazz gives the artist more ways to be creative and have the ability uh, to, to ebb and flow throughout the different chord changes. Solos change every single time they're played. And speaking from personal experience, not many jazz musicians play the same solo every time because it depends on how they feel at the time they're playing, it depends on the mood of the artist at the time, the speed of the song, and even the atmosphere of the club. Like I said before, improv is a huge piece of jazz. We were all taught uh, since we started playing to live in the moment and feel the chord changes and progressions through the solo sections and to just play. It seems as if many people have forgot how to live in the moment because they're so caught up in their day-to-day -day schedules. We need to just let go sometimes and be ourselves and express who we are. We care too much of what other people think, so we get nervous about expressing ourselves for be fear of being made fun of. Even after playing on internationally famous stages such as Carnegie Hall in New York, Harpa Hall in Reykjavik, and the Sydney Opera House this summer in Australia, I can confidently say that I have a hell of a lot more time playing at low-key jazz gigs with my friends anywhere than on any big name stage. Learning to live in the moment, in my case, through the lens of jazz, has been one of the greatest decisions I've made in my life. Once I learned how to get on stage and just be myself or act how I do around my friends all the time, I was, it just changed my life. I was pretty amazed to just be able to get up on any stage, wherever, whenever, and just play music right from my head and have everyone hear the song through my ears. So look, guys, girls, teachers, students, everyone just needs to go live in the moment. Go write a song with lyrics that just come into your head at first thought. Go paint a picture, who cares what of, with whatever strokes or colors come to mind in the moment. Cook an omelet for all I care with whatever you see lying around the kitchen. I mean, look what I'm wearing. I improvised this entire outfit like five minutes before. That's why it's all, you know, pieced together. Nobody cares, like, what I look like. It doesn't matter. You can just improvise it. Even if you take one thing away from this speech today, what we can learn is that jazz teaches us to be present, to live in the present, to live in the now while we push the boundaries. Thank you.